Welcome everyone to Star Trek Discovery Pod, a kind of smart, kind of funny podcast covering new and classic Trek. I am your captain, Kirking it up tonight, Mariah Gossett, and with me on the view screen, we have Clyde Haynes. What's up, Clyde? We got our sweet, we got our sweet, sweet hats, Cerritos, yes. lower decky hats. Pretty great. I'm excited. It keeps wanting to blur my face when I wear it, and it doesn't go over my headphones. But I also got lower decks blue nail polish on super fun happy Had lower decks day it uh <laughs> it fell down so we're just gonna leave it like we're gonna leave it there cut. Yeah. we're gonna leave it there it's gonna be fine uh-huh. and uh if you couldn't tell we are covering the premiere of the third season of lower decks entitled grounded but before that clyde can you tell people how they can you know like support the show find us you know it's been a minute it's been a minute it's, it's been a while it feels like like you probably don't know because i barely know because i'm like what are all the things it's been a minute um mm-hmm. so first off if you're watching us live live on youtube or wherever you stream your podcast uh and you want to chat along you want to tell us about how you felt about this premiere episode, you want to talk to us, you want to see us, you want us to read your comment, then all we have to, all you have to do is type capital P, capital O, capital D, capital pod in the chat, and we will take a look, right? So, uh, yeah. And in a moment, <laughs> it's in a been a while. Duh. In a moment, <laughs> uh, we're going to ask you what were your top thoughts about the show? So you'll know what we're talking about in a second. Just hit capital H, capital F, capital HF in the in the chat, and we will take a look at, at your thoughts. We're going to do it. And if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. We're excited you're here. We're going to be talking all about Lower Decks for the rest of the season and any other new trick that comes our way. Um, I think we'll maybe get some new Prodigy later this year. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're hitting that that slump for the holidays. I feel like we don't get a ton mm-hmm. of new stuff around then, but we shall see. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can find information on how to subscribe to the show, how to watch us live, how to listen to the audio only version, if that's more your thing at Star Trek pod.co. You can also find ways to support us on Patreon. Um, so for just $2 an episode, which uh, it's a good time to jump in this month because you're just going to pay two bucks and you're going to get into our sweet, sweet Patreon. Uh, you can hang out with us for watch alongs. We can chat. We've been posting pictures of some of the sweet swag that um, the lovely folks at Paramount said to us. Um, I'm thinking for a Patreon only thing, Clyde, maybe we should have a hot sauce tasting. Oh, so, you know, I was thinking about it. I, I couldn't mm-hmm. quite make it happen for the pod, but yeah. I like buffalo um, like cauliflower. So like buffalo mm-hmm. wings. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about trying that out and making some like buffalo cauliflower with the Ketracel hot sauce. I tasted a little bit. Um, yeah. Wasn't that hot? Like it wasn't like I've had some, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I'm not like a hot sauce co- connoisseur. You're so not you're... gonna find me on on hot ones on, or something. On the hot ones, no. <laughs> no, I'd be out early. But uh I thought it was good. Like I was like, mm. some yeah. more a mariner reaction than a Boimler reaction to the hot sauce situation. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do a little live taste tester for our patrons. <laughs> uh, you guys can join us over there. Again, that's patreon.com slash Star Trek pod or go to Star Trek pod.co. But Clyde, I think it's time we grab a batch of the finest Boimler raisins and mm. uh, we dive into tonight's episode entitled Grounded. Uh, it was written by Chris Kula and directed by Jason Zurich. And uh, if you are joining us for the first time, we do a little special thing. You know, we got to we got to know what everyone's like off the dome, quick, quick thoughts. What's your flashpoint review? And on this particular show, it's not a hot that, take, Mm-mm. not a hot take. No, no, no. no. It's got to be a hot freak. Hot freaks. Hot freaks. Got to have some like hot that. freaks. So, Clyde. Hit me, hit me with your hot freak. I really enjoyed the fact that Lower Decks was back. And it's one of those things where I always say, you know, the first season can be a little bit rough as you're establishing so much about the world, about the characters. But if your series can make it to season two or season three, now now you're cooking, right? And what I loved about this is, we just got some some depth to Mariner, 
that you could not have given us in the first season, right? Like the the angst of she may be your captain, but she's my mother, right? Our, our, the ability for us to see where that relationship has gone without having to explain it, without any monologues or exposition, just this moment, I, I, it felt to me like, okay, now we're inside the middle of this of this group. Um, and so I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was, it just felt like, wow, we've gotten the band back together. Um, and I, it was, it was, you know, I, I'll be honest. I didn't even know how much I missed Lower Decks until I started seeing that first episode and was just like, man, Rutherford and Tendi and Mariner and Boimler back together. And I, I felt like we didn't even get a whole lot of everybody else. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, but it still felt like home. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It was nice to see everybody back together. I think, uh, You know, I saw an interview with Mike McMahon today talking about how, you know, if this was a regular episode of Trek, it would have been the procedural court drama. But this Mm -hmm. isn't about them. This is our lower decks crew. So they have to get into their own shenanigans. And what are they going to get up to? So I I really enjoyed the getting the team back together, seeing everyone kind of in their... um, you know, their street clothes, if you will, you know, out of uniform, we get some really fun Easter eggs. Um, we see a Jake Cisco sweater make an appearance uh, on Rutherford, which I enjoyed. And it, once again, there's just a rifle of Easter eggs to enjoy throughout the series. I've got a list all or throughout the episode. I got a list but, for but later. Did but you have a favorite? My a favorite? favorite? Yes. Ooh, I think... I mean, like all of the Bozeman, Montana, like the music sequences, <laughs> hilarious for first contact, all the music stuff for the first contact stuff, really like the single song jukebox, the like, guy dancing in the background. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was prob- <laughs> probably James Cromwell making an appearance. It was also a big one for me. Well, I, it, what's interesting to me about that is they went so hard on a movie that I don't know that people really love, right? Like, it's first contact. It was like, of all the Star Trek movies you could go, like, really in on, you chose an interesting one. Um, but I, I loved it. So I think for me, it was um, the the Cisco's uh, Louisiana-like mm-hmm. restaurant. Yeah. I was just like, that is, that's, like, I love it. Like, I thought that was, that was a perfect moment. It was pretty great. So. Um. Well, yeah, let's dive in and see what other people's hot freaks are here in the chat. I'm going to scroll a little bit and find some people. Lee's A says, um, what was it? It was, oh, uh, Boimler likes to sniff captain, the captain's chair. Yeah, I saw the, so the personal logs were very weird. Um, hot freak, loved it all, but really found the news banner especially hilarious. I did look up all of the all of the Easter eggs from the news banner for y'all, so I will do that later. Um, let's see, hot freak. So many Easter eggs. Wesley Jake sweater, Cisco's uh Ketracel white hot sauce, also hilarious. Why are there still bridges? Nobody drives for Kirk's sake, also hysterical. But some people really like that bridge. Yes. Um for such a short episode, I feel like it is so dense in both story and jokes. Yes. And it doesn't feel overwhelming, though. But now that it's like even going back, I'm like, man, we really started with everyone being on shore leave. And then we got everybody back together. And then they like stole a ship. We had like so many things happen. Um, Chibi says, hot freak, along with all the very funny stuff. I feel like the show has matured. Boimler is more confident. Mariner is more three dimensional. Tendi took charge. Yeah, everyone's kind of coming into their own becoming their best ends and selves. I think that's really great. Kuhn says, mm-hmm. hot freak. Love seeing Captain Bateson and Tuvok on screen, but we could have gotten some dialogue from Kelsey Grammer and Tim Russ. Yeah. I, uh, maybe they'll come back around. I don't know. Tim Russ, I I feel like would have been fun to get. I'm not always like a huge Kelsey. I, 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 yeah. Anyway. And Kelsey Grammer, I feel like that's going to break your budget. Like, Uh, honestly, that was probably why. That is going to break your budget. Uh, Um, probably get like someone to do a Kelsey Grammer impression. You probably could. I mean, for that Kelsey Grammer, like one line budget, you could probably bring in the entire next generation cast, yeah. right? Like, I'm just saying, like, again, no shade, you know. Yeah. But, you know, 
business. It, it, this is a business, so don't. Uh, we've got don't some. Uh, we've got some people who really like First Contact uh, here, Clyde, in the chat. I, I like it. I don't know that I'm saying it's the best movie. I liked it. Um, it listen, if you're trying to figure out wh- why I won't say I love it, a lot of it took place on a planet, and as as known, I am a space opera type of guy. Mm. So. I kind of need more of it to take place in an actual ship that's moving and not one that's parked over the planet. That's my only thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, I wanted to kind of, I figured we can go through our four main characters here um, and kind of talk about what we saw from them. This episode, we start with, I think, uh, or we start with Mariner kind of at home dealing with like her dad's trying to be like, just trust the process, trust Starfleet. And she's feeling really guilty that there was nothing she could do to get her mom out of this situation. And the line that, uh, you know, like they put her in handcuffs really like it kind of broke my heart in the episode hearing Mariner get so upset. And I was like, man, the show, what a roller coaster way to go. Little animated TV show like (laughs) what did you think of Mariner's sort of arc that we see in this episode of like trying to go above and beyond for her mom and like showing how that relationship has changed over time but then ultimately still getting in trouble for it at the end (laughs) I mean I I thought it was it was one of the best things about this episode to me and, and the fact that um it's easy to, especially in an animated series, it's easy to take a character like Mariner and just have them constantly hitting the same note as this rebellious child, right? This rebel, this a- adolescent almost, and just keep hitting it. Um, it. But what we see is a tremendous amount of growth. And this isn't like, like I would imagine, and again, I often compare this show to Rick and Morty because of the creators, Right. And you can look over and say, well, haven't you seen Morty, you know, evolve? And I'm like, "Mm, have you? Mariner is this is real character development. Right. From I don't care. Just, you know, get me kicked out anyway or it needs to be done my way to having this moment where she's basically breaking down because of what she's experienced. Like that was real. That's real emotion from an animated character. This is a big moment. Right. Like. I felt like what I saw on screen and shout out to Tony news, but what I saw on screen was this moment where I was like, I feel that like I can, I can't imagine what that was like for Mariner to be in that moment where she saw her mother in handcuffs and taking her away. And she like, we see all this respect that she really has for her mother, even though she's constantly like disobeying and kind of getting in trouble. Um, I just thought, and and still being true to who she was, right? And then Mm -hmm. the love that she has of her friends to give them off the ship because she's like, you can't go down. Like, there's so much there that really, to me, just spoke of, I'm seeing more emotion out of an animated character than I see out of some, like, live action shows. So I I thought it was a, a big moment. Yeah, we've definitely seen a ton of growth from Mariner throughout the whole series. And I thought this was a really great way to kick off season three and showing us that, you know, kind of setting the bar, right? Like she is now has a slightly better family dynamic, but it's still a little tense because she is the child of Starfleet officers and having to live in that shadow. And we've also now set up for this season that she has to report to Ransom, who is mommy now. (laughs) which was a very unhinged line that I enjoyed. Um, And I do wonder if they're going to, because we've had a little bit of some like romantic tension between those two characters in past seasons. So I'm wondering how Mm -hmm. that's going to play within their kind of relationship going forward this season. You know, I think the question is, what do we want? Right. Right. Because it can go in a different, a bunch of different ways. I think what I expect is that they're both going to come out of this with a little bit more respect for one another. Where that leads is anyone's guess, mm-hmm. right? I mean, do you want there to be rom- a romantic kind of situation between <laughs> Ransom and Mariner? I mean, I enjoy tension, so I'm like all here for it. I don't think they're going to end up together ultimately, but I will enjoy watching them play with the tension. Yeah. Yeah, that would be... That would be my my thoughts there. I'm with um, that. 
from there, we also have some Boimler developments this episode. So we learned the backstory that he apparently is like the hot farmer's son who all of the farm workers want to get with. And he's totally oblivious towards and just wants to do a good job in the most Boimler way. Um, we also learn he has very strange personal logs and apparently dyes his hair purple. So that's also a new fun fact. <laughs> That was, and I like the way they left us. Like, you know, no one ever is, will ever know that my real hair color is. <laughs> yeah. Like that was a, a nice. It's like, oh, give us another thread to pull. I let me ask you this: When it first opened, did you think it was Boimler? Did you think it was Picard? Oh, I mean, I had already seen the previews, so I like knew okay. it was Boimler. I'm trying to think back of like prior to previews. I think I. I knew it it was not going to be Picard and it was going to be some sort of fun joke. I did not know who would quite be behind the hat, but I did not think it was going to be Picard. But I know that's what they were trying to go for. I mean, it had a very Picard vibe to it. Yeah, um, of course. Though very different, you know. Yeah, I do love that it's raisins instead of uh, grapes. Um, <laughs> I mean, wine. I didn't know what to... Th- Listen, I didn't know what to think about the raisins. I thought it was funny at first. Like, I was like, this is so silly. Then I got them raisin cookies. And I'm like, oh, I'm for this. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, send me all of the snacks. I'll take them all. Um, Uh, But I enjoyed that we see him kind of both being his most, the most Boimler in that he's just like concentrating on work, even in this like farm field where he's like, I don't want to even be here, but I'm still going to do the best job that I can. And then also still being so supportive of his friends and breaking the rules in order to be supportive of his friends. Cause that's definitely not the Boimler we started out with in season one. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, we think of him as very by the book, right? Very trying to get ahead, trying to make captain faster than anybody else. But Mm -hmm. this was, this was a Boimler who was like, I'm, I'm here for my crew, right. For, for my posse. Um, and, and I like this, though. I mean, and I, I think this Boimler is a little bit different, like like you said before, a little bit more mature, a little bit more confident, a um, little bit, you know, he still wants wants everything he wants, but he's willing to take risks now. Um, and I think that's going to make him ultimately a really good Starfleet captain. Yeah, I think they're doing a good job of setting up his trajectory. And um, I don't know if you watched the Ready Room, but they had a little clip kind of of uh, an upcoming episode. And you get to see Boimler trying to do his version of letting go. And I think it's going to be very funny to see him trying to be more flexible and become this, you know, I am I am like the rule breaker cool guy. <laughs> Um, That'd be hilarious. Marge asked about raisin cookies. So Clyde and I got very nice swag packages from Paramount that included Boimler raisin cookies. <laughs> like oatmeal raisin cookies. Oatmeal raisin and cookies. They were delicious. <laughs> Listen, I'm a secret. It's, it's it's not really a secret, but it's kind of a secret. Um, if you ask me what my favorite cookie is, I'll probably tell you chocolate chip. But I can't resist a good soft oatmeal raisin cookie. Like mm. I feel like chocolate chip is the cool thing to say, but deep down in my heart, I'm an oatmeal raisin cookie guy. But what about these were incredible. oatmeal chocolate chip? So n- now you're just trying to have it all, and I'm for it, right? <laughs> like that's just like yeah, it's a very, very like that's a moment where I'm like I've tuned everything else in the world out and i'm focused on a cookie it's a weird thing so i don't do it often it's got to be a special (laughs) place special cookies um we also catch up with tendy and rutherford we don't get a ton of um i think we see them at their best in this episode uh we see them on a bit of a shore leave i love how tendy is just like i never got to do anything during the academy i want to go and explore earth this is so fun we're in new orleans having gumbo at cisco's Mm -hmm. um i was like oh new orleans made it to the future that makes me happy (laughs) yes um and uh yeah they they're a fun little duo i like their like civilian clothing choices. I thought Rutherford looked great um, in his Jake Cisco sweater. You know, I love the fact that we got them together. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I love the fact that they were doing this together and experiencing it together. And it was just like, I I don't know what we're going to get out of Rutherford and Tindy, but I love their, if nothing else, their friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and it just seemed like 
the you know should we go back to the Grand Canyon again and then no let's go to Bozeman oh mm-hmm. like just the excitement um, they genuinely love being around each other and it and you can feel it uh, and I think I'm excited for Tindy to experience all these things I felt like I felt like it was unfair that she couldn't go down the Vulcan slide the Vulcan ship mm-hmm. slide at Bozeman mm-hmm. mainly because. I know they said that they they were there for the rocket ride, but I saw the sign on the rocket ride. It said 25 minutes before the next slide. She could have gone down a couple times and they would have been fine. So I'm just saying like they did get churros. They did get churros. (laughs) They did. Um, Which I loved. Yeah. Seeing them in line, like when you go to a theme park and it's got the videos with all your safety information as you're like waiting in line. I thought that was very funny, very cute. Um, And yeah, I, I enjoyed seeing like, you know, Rutherford, Rutherfording it up and getting all the computers to do what he needs them to do because he is a good engineer. And you see mm-hmm. Tendi being a super supportive friend and thinking on her feet when it comes to the weird space blobs that are procreating on the ship um, because they needed a new breeding ground. Yes. Um, you know, I thought I thought it was a great episode to see everyone not only be supportive of each other, but also... Um, kind of their best versions of themselves as they're trying to do what they think is the the right thing to do. I also love the interaction with the old transporter chief and how it was so tongue in cheek. Like you've seen this a million times where we're going to sneak in, we're going to overpower the transporter guy and we're going to beam up to where we need. (laughs) It's just like, you would think that there would be some training on that, right? Like at this point, it's not a secret this is what happens when all of a sudden no one you're there by yourself for, for days and months, weeks on end. And so, suddenly some people show up, they're not there just to hang out. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a, that was a nice kind of element. And he turned out to be a really nice guy. And um, yeah, I, I like that. I actually, I kind of watched that scene a few times. So I was like, it's kind of neat. Yeah. The, there was another, there was a little Easter egg in the transporter room and now I'm trying, Oh, the book he was reading was mm-hmm. authored by um I can't remember his name now, but he's essentially the guy who's credited with like inventing transporters in Star Trek. So mm. I thought that was a fun Easter egg. Nice. It was a it was a good one. Um yeah, and then we kind of get the big reveal at the end from our command crew, which is essentially what this episode would have been if this was a regular episode of Star Trek. So we find out that you know the pack leads did it to themselves you know star trek prevails of course they're going to take care of their own i did think it was interesting that you know mariner is feeling that there is sort of a dismissal of california class um captains and is kind of Mm -hmm. like i don't think they're going to do justice by my mom and i in a in a way i was like oh it's um an interesting commentary about like now, right? Like we often can't trust the justice system with a lot of things in current society. Um, but in lower decks and in Star Trek, it's going to try to do the right thing. So um, you understand where her cautions come from, mm-hmm. but I thought it was, you know, I-, I always like when Trek somehow manages to tell you a little bit of a morality play, even in a lower decks episode. I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, we don't always see it, but when you think about the Trek that we're used to, whether it's Discovery, whether it's TNG, Voyager, the captains that we're dealing with are always like the best of the best, Mm -hmm. right? In, In a sense, they're privileged. And so when you get into a situation where it's like, oh, you've been accused of something, then there's this thought, well, how can you accuse someone of the enterprise? This is the best of the best. We have to throw all of our resources to prove that they're innocent, right? Like whatever it takes. We're, we're, you know, if you think about the, um, the Wesley Crusher Academy episode, which the name was right there on the tip of my tongue, but it wasn't, right? Where they do the starburst formation and he's under trial, mm-hmm. right? He's, he's privileged. And so the entire crew of the flagship of the of Starfleet comes to his rescue, right? I think what we see in in from Mariner's point of view is that she's looking going, well, we're not that privileged. 
right? We're lower decks. It's California mm-hmm. class. Like they're not going to stand up for her. Like they might stand up for Wesley. So we have to intervene. And I thought in typical Star Trek fashion, what they said was, you know, in our universe, trust the system. In our universe, trust the process. Mm-hmm. This is what it should look like, is that regardless of who you are, we're going to throw everything at, at it for you. And I, I like that. I like the idea of it. Yeah, agreed. It was nice to see. And like, I loved Mariner being so surprised and everyone kind of being like, oh, right. Like we are a part of this thing that's trying to like do the right thing for the most part. Um, and um I liked all of the like very dramatic like still shots of like how everything went down because they're like, yeah, you don't get to see a bunch of this. This wasn't the episode. So it's like right. just the description of it. Um, so I thought that was very, very clever and fun. And I liked seeing Tuvok back and Kelsey yeah. Grammer's character. And as we said, yeah, Kelsey Grammer probably would have cost the entire budget of the whole season. Yeah, um, <laughs> We've gotten one episode. That would have been it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love John Solano's comment. Um, he says, Pod, I don't know if it's already been said, but I'm so glad they didn't draw out the story for the entire season. Were you worried about that, Mariah? Because I was a little bit worried that this was going to draw out for a while. You know, I I had faith because it's it is lower decks, right? And like mm-hmm. they're short episodes. They only get 10 episodes. They're less than 30 minutes long. And so if you're going to draw it out for too long, I was like, maybe an episode, maybe two, but I'm glad they just got it out of the way. And now we're sort of like back in our regular world and can kind of continue to go on whatever the mission of the day is, which I think is what their preference is, right, for that show. It's my preference, too. I love a good episodic Star Trek. I do. Obviously, we've all been loving Strange New Mm -hmm. Worlds. Um I see we've got some good uh, convo about cookies <laughs> in the chat. I was trying to see if there's anything else kind of going on. Um, John also says pod. Um, oh, this is back at Mariner and um, Ransom. They can't ethically have any relationship other than professional. He isn't just her CEO, but specifically assigned to her as a project. I feel like that uh, in theory is true, but Trek often mm-hmm. breaks that rule. Yes. <laughs> Yes. All of the time. <laughs> right. And if there was a show that was really going to break it, I would fully expect that that show was going to be Lower Decks. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, I was going to go through some of my favorite Easter eggs that I found oh. from the show. Let's do it. take a gander here. Well, first of all, we get, you know, Boimler's Vineyard, a, a big obvious reference to Picard's Vineyard. They did the shot very similarly. I've already talked a bit about rutherford sweater um i found a site uh, slash film.com has a good list of all the easter eggs um uh of like kind of the primary ones and they have a side by side of of mm. jake and rutherford and it's really good <laughs> um cisco's creole kitchen which i love that they kept that pretty true to form um and and pretty grounded so that it it kind of stayed the same and played a good homage we also get the the hot sauce there um which is named after the deep space nine crazy drug from soldiers thing um uh catch a cell white hot sauce (laughs) which i'm excited to try later we get Mm -hmm. bozeman montana which i also just realized they were wearing that they sold the hats um (laughs) as like a uh an item for sale and Tendi and Rutherford are wearing it like perfect little tourists that they are. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a series of engineering tools on the table when they're hanging out in the transporter room that match um, the same tools that chief O'Brien would use on deep space nine. And then we get into all of the cryon stuff. So there's some uh, from FSN news, which is also the same news network that they used in Picard. It, uh, he's he does a sit down interview on that news station, so it's their like internal version of CNN, I suppose. Um, and so there was a headline about the Zebulon sisters who we met in Lower Decks. They do the choo choo song, and then they added the third chew, and everything changed. 
Um, <laughs> there's a Zach Doran reference from TNG, a Sony Clemens uh, from TNG Neutral Zone, the cryogenics guy, also the country musician mm-hmm. person who apparently his music started a riot. Um, there's a bunch of stuff about the London Kings, which is a ba- you know a baseball reference, uh, Star Trek base baseball references. And then the one that was at the very last one is Ferment's Last Theorem, which is a real mathematical theorem, which has been, there's a bunch, anyway, the Wikipedia article on it is really dense, but it's really funny that a child would solve it because it's like seen as like people have won like Nobel prizes trying to solve the theorem. <laughs> so, <laughs> um yeah, I see Keen says, uh, mm-hmm. with all these teasing of Cisco and various shows, Avery books, please relent and reappear in some form of Trek. I know they have, I've seen in multiple interviews, they've all said they, he has been approached and it is fully ball in his court. So he would be welcome oh, I'm, back. I'm sure he's been approached. I mean, he's yeah. beloved. So it'd be nice. I mean, yeah. could you imagine just for a moment, a Picard, Janeway, Cisco moment Ugh. in lower decks? We'd all explode. I think yeah. it'd all just explode. I think that a hundred percent would happen. I'd love it. I I definitely love that. That'd be it, it wouldn't even have to be long and I'd be out of my mind. Yeah. Um, was there anything we missed, Clyde? Anything you wanted to talk about in this episode? It's you know, they're less than thirty minutes. I don't think we'll it's- be hitting a full hour unless we get something real crazy juicy in these episodes. But I thought this was um a solid premiere. What did you think in yeah. comparison to the last two seasons? How, how did this premiere line up for you? This is my favorite premiere so far. Um, I mean, it's just, it was, you know, like you said, packed full of Easter eggs. Um, they resolved the cliffhanger very quickly. Mm-hmm. We got to see our characters. Um, I mean, we even got to see a little bit of, of ransom and, um, you know, I, I always like the fact that this is probably the most screen time that Mariner's father has gotten mm-hmm. since the beginning of the show. And so their dynamic, seeing their dynamic um, was really nice. You got to see her, you know, Uncle, what was it? Uncle S. Um, you know, she comes from a very Starfleet family, right? Mm-hmm. Like that her her parents' business is Starfleet. And so... I I just thought this was was great. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that, you know, Ransom's comment of I'm your mama now. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun season. Um I agree. I think the pilot for me still holds pretty high, but I thought this was okay. a really, really solid uh season opener. I'm really excited for the rest of the season from all of the teasers and trailers we've seen, I think it's going to be a really fun ride as always. Um, and I'm glad we've kind of moved past the pack leads. I'm hoping we're mm-hmm. going to get into some more interesting, um, uh, you know, different worlds and species. Cause to me, that's the most fun part about an animated show is that you can kind of play. So in so many areas, right. Without limitations because it's animated. So um, I'm pretty excited for it. Well, y'all, I think yeah. I think that's it for us tonight. We appreciate you tuning in. We know it's a little bit later. We're doing the West Coast time thing. Really appreciate you all being here for the live stream. If you're listening to us next day, thanks for hanging out with us too. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts if you have the time. You can also rate us on Spotify. And we will be back uh, every Thursday while we're reviewing Lower Decks, at least for the next nine more weeks. Um, and we will also have some very special coverage from Star Trek Day. So stay tuned for that coming up next month. Um, Clyde, can you remind people where they can find us on the Internet? Oh, they can find us a lot of places, but mainly uh, go ahead over to Star Trek Co. Um, and that's where we live. And just another shout out, like uh, Mariah said earlier, if you want to hang out with us during the week in between pods, uh, check out our Patreon. And just for $2, that's one, one, two, you can have access to our private Slack channel where we chop it up and talk about all kind of things Trek um, and post pictures of hats and cookies like all mm-hmm. the time. 
all the hats, cookies, and swag. We'll also mm -hmm. be doing some special hot sauce material in our Patreon. Uh, so definitely come over and hang with us. Shouts to Karen who helps us with the Twitter. You are so appreciated. Um, and just everyone in the Patreon. You guys uh, really keep that community thriving and we appreciate you so much. Uh, we will see you again next week. Until then, live long and prosper, y'all. Bye.